We back. Shelby Varner from Anahuac, Texas. I hope you're studying along with me. I hope you're learning some things that's good for your life. Um, I mentioned to you that um, God, in, in uh, the last uh, message, I actually, I mentioned Proverbs 4. So if you got your Bible, I want you to turn there. All right. Proverbs 4 and uh, uh, verse 20 is where I want to start. Okay. Proverbs 4, verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear. Strain to hear my sayings. So God is saying, listen to what I say. Not humans, not unless they go along with the word. Anybody that's going against the word of God, you need to quit listening to them. Okay, fine. Just because they're not experiencing what they could have, don't let them short circuit your life. That don't even make sense. Okay. Uh, verse 21 says, talking about the word now, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them, the word, in the midst of your heart. See, can't nobody do that but you. For they are life to those that find them. The word, it, it gives life to, to the ones who find it. And health, health, what? Words are health to all of my flesh. That's what I read. Health to all of my flesh, okay? So I want to talk to you about healing, all right? Can people get healed today? Is God a healer? Is God a miracle worker? Can God heal today? Did God run out of power? Uh, you know, can God do something about my situation? What about what the doctors say? All right, I want to deal with some of that because, like I say, judge by results. If I see something in the Bible and it's for me, it's opposed to work, all right? You, you, you know why you can look at scriptures in the Old Testament and, and Psalms and Proverbs and all that were written so long ago? You know why they still work? Because Jesus, like Jesus said, the words I speak are spirit and life. The word is eternal. So that means it don't lose no power. The word of God is eternal. You know, flesh will die, but the word of God is eternal. Got it? And so I can always look in the word and find me a promise and believe it and stand on it and it'll work. Now, I have done this personally, okay? But, but I want to read another scripture so you will understand, all right? So I think it's uh, Matthew 8, verse 17. All right, Matthew 8, verse 17. And you know what? You need to read the whole New Testament. You need to study this book. You need to study. I can't even tell you how much fun I have reading the Bible. I, it's wonderful. You understand? I get, it's a whole nother world of me because these words are alive. They come alive into me. They do something to me. Words do something to you too. All right? Matthew 8, verse 17. Here's what the Bible says. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So you know what that means? If himself took them, yourself ought to not have them. If Jesus took sickness and disease, if he took it, you know what I mean? If you took this pen from me, I don't have it. You took it. But you got to understand this spiritually to tap into it. Okay? And see, what happens is people, because they hadn't experienced what this says, then they don't believe it. And they'll never come to the point of experiencing what this says until they start believing. And so it looked like the Bible is not true or look like God is showing favorites, like he loves you more than me or, or he'll heal you, you, but he won't. Come on, no, maybe you got bad understanding. Maybe you don't have enough knowledge. Maybe you leaving something out. Maybe Psalms 107 verse 20 says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Psalms 107 verse 20. He says he sent his word and he healed them. Now watch, and deliver them from their destruction. So if he heal them with the word, healing must be in the word. Got it? If himself took it, then I'm not supposed to have it. Okay? And so people go by their experiences. They say, well, why everybody, why are all these people sick? I don't know why everybody's sick. I don't know. People just get sick. Sometimes they eat wrong. Sometimes they violate the natural laws of the body. You know, sometimes they drugging and doing stuff. There's a whole lot of reasons people get sick. You can't blame that on God. And then some say, well, well, God don't, God don't, don't heal everybody. God will heal everybody that will let God heal them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. The devil is an outlaw. 
The devil is an outlaw. He's outside the law of God. That, that's my definition. So I, ain't got, I don't want to listen to him because he comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. The devil ain't never done me no good, and you either. And so instead of arguing about whether God heal or not and all of that, I think you ought to find out what the Bible says about whether God can heal or not, okay? And so I start reading the Bible, and I start, oh, well, let me say something else just for the record. People that say that, er, uh, well, uh, let me see. They say it must not be the will of God for everybody to get healed, okay? The Bible says God wants everybody to be saved, but everybody not going to be saved. You know why? Because everybody don't want to be saved. Everybody want to accept Jesus, and so you got a choice. And I'm telling you, you got a choice. Now, I was raised in a church where they didn't believe in healing. They believed the day the miracles are over. But I kept reading where the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I'm telling you that the Word of God will heal you. So let, 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 me, uh, uh, let me just say it like this. I'm going to tell you a testimony, a lot of them eventually, but one specific one that's coming to mind that I hadn't told in a long time about a cousin of mine who, I, who, who got healed. And then I'm going to tell you about how Shelby got healed. Judged by results, right? It's supposed to work. If it worked for anybody, anybody on earth, it could work for everybody. Got it? Okay. And so don't make no excuse to stay sick. Find out what you need to do to get well. So... If I was trying to get a problem solved, you know, I wouldn't go to a mechanic. His car broke all the time. I'm on the way to him, and I got to give him a ride to his mechanic shop so he could fix my car. You kidding me? You understand? A fat man selling pills talking about guaranteed to cause you to lose wealth. Lose wealth. And I see him walking across the bridge, and he all over it, weighing four or 500 pounds. His pills ain't working for him. It can't. So why don't you listen to somebody who it worked for? We go to seminars because people teach you how to get wealthy. Well, are they wealthy? You listen to them. People tell you about success. Are they successful? Then you listen to them. You'll go to a personal trainer. Is he in shape? Then you listen to him. If he's not putting out the results, maybe you shouldn't listen. So the people that's talking to you and telling you all this stuff, what kind of results they got? Oh, they going to the doctor too. Okay. Oh, okay, so they, whatever sickness it is, don't matter what the name is, whatever they got, okay, so no wonder they don't believe in it. You understand? Your believing don't have nothing to do with my believing. I can believe what I want to, and you can too. See, so my believing is going to affect Shelby Varner. Okay, so now I want to tell you about a cousin of mine. All right, I'm going to tell you. See, I'm going to tell you, I got healed already when this happened, but I want to start with her. So you will understand, this is not a game. This ain't no joke, okay? I had a cousin that she had a husband. And I don't know if she had four or five kids or whatever. But either way, something happened to her. She was an alcoholic. She drank a bunch, and something happened, and her mind snapped. Just popped. We don't know what happened. All of a sudden, she was in the hospital in Houston. I don't know if she's in Ben Tob or St. Luke, one of them, but it don't matter. I'll say Ben Tob, but I don't know where she was, but I'll say Ben Tob. She was there. And so her mind had snapped, and... Didn't nobody know what was wrong. So when I talked to the doctor, or the nurse, whoever it was, I think the doctor, said that her mind was like a, 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 a fourth grader. She didn't know she was married. She didn't know she had children. She was acting like a child. She wanted to play with dolls and do little kitty stuff and all that. They had never seen a case like that. They don't know what happened to her. All of a sudden, she was acting like a baby and doing stuff, grown woman, acting like a little kid, because she didn't know she had a husband and a house, and they had vehicles and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? She didn't know, okay? And so I was on the street, and I ran into one of my cousins. See, they, 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 they came to talk to me about praying for her. You know, and a whole lot of my cousins, a lot of them, when they need prayer, somebody said, guess who they come get? Shelby. You think any of them come to the church? Nope. You think any of them, you know, you, you understand, join a visit? Nope. They find me when they sick. They believe in they pastor, they church, whatever, but when they sick, stuff don't move, guess who they come find? And I ain't mad at them, you know what I mean, because I ain't a healer. Jesus is. But I understand there are laws of healing. 
Okay, now, number one, let, let, let me just tell you this before I finish this testimony. Don't put up with sickness. You do not have to be sick. Every disease you've ever heard of has been cured somewhere. So when they talk about incurable, that just ain't so. Every disease, every sickness in life, some kind of way, somewhere, has been healed. And if it can get healed one time, it can be healed again. And your mind ought to be, well, if don't nobody else get healed, I'm going to get my healing. Because the Bible says he sent his word and heal. So healing is in the word, okay? And so, so they asked me to go pray for my cousin, and they was telling me what was wrong with her. I said, okay. And so I went, and God told me to take her little nephew. He was about nine. God said, because I want this to be uh, imprinted in his heart, and he'll never forget it the rest of his life. I said, okay. And I mean, right now he's in his 50s, close to his 50s right now. But he knows when he was a little boy, I took him because God told me to take him. So we went to the hospital. We went up on the, on, on the top floor, and the lady said, well, he can't come up there. He's just a little boy. So I told the lady, I said, well, I come 40 miles away, and I'm finna go pray, you know, for his auntie. And God told me to bring him. And so the nurse said, okay. She looked around. She said, go, go, go. So she let us go up there. When we got up to the top floor, then they had sheets between the people that they knew were about to die. You understand? They just had sheets between them, and they were moaning all over. You could, there was a smell in there, and there was moaning and screaming and all that in the whole place. So you know they was going to get wheeled out today or tomorrow or next week or whatever. So that's where she was. Okay, just sheets between bed to bed to bed to bed to bed, and that was it. So when I finally found out, and I called her name because, you know, her, they folks know her name was Lil, L-I-L. Okay, Lil from Harden, from Ames, whatever. They know. Ask they folks. You might know them. But anyway, she had lost, she was the one that lost her mind. And when we went, the, the nurse said, she's over here. When we got over there around there where she was, Lil was like, oh my goodness. She was like a wild woman. Do you understand? Her hair was all over the place. They had her tied down, her wrists and her feet and her leg was tied down to the bed. I mean tied. You know, and she was fighting. And, 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 you know, turning her head and fighting and, and trying to get loose and fighting, and, you know. And so I was trying to talk to her. She never did acknowledge I was there. I don't know if she heard me or not, you know, but I was trying to talk to her. So Troy, that's a little nephew, he was standing there looking over the bed. So I'm thinking, man, I can't, you know, so I said, okay, Lord, you sent me here. You told me before I left, you know what, I'm gonna, later on I'm going to get on how to hear the voice of God too. You told me when I left, that you were going to heal Lil. God don't lie. So Lil going to get healed. Now I'm looking at her. I ain't never heard of nothing like what I'm about to pray for. I ain't never seen nothing like this ever in my whole life, ever. I ain't never seen nobody snap, lose their mind, act like that and all that. And so she's screaming and trying to pull her arms away and trying to get away and all of that, okay? And so I tried to lay hands on her head, but I couldn't because she was jerking her head so much. And I said, man, I can't even lay hands on it. That's what I'm thinking. And so I looked at her right foot, and this foot was the steelest in her whole body. Everything else was rocking and all, but she was still jerking, but I could put, I could lay hands on her foot. <laughs> Glory. And her big toe, God told me, judge by results. God said, grab her big toe. And pray for her, and I'll raise her up. I said, okay. So Lil's big toe was sticking up, and she was still fighting, but I could put my finger, I could grab her toe. I grabbed Lil's toe like this, and I said, Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you to heal Lil now. I said, devil, let her go, and do not come back. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I had the right to pray that because to have authority, you got to sit under authority. So when Jesus said, behold, I give you power, talking about the disciples that tread on serpents and scorpions, he was saying, I'm giving you authority. I'm giving you the right to use my power because I already know I can't heal nobody. The only reason I was there, because God told me to go. The only reason I grabbed a toe, because God told me to do it. The only reason I believed that God was going to do it, because his word, he said it to me. 
I had already read about healing, but he said it to me. I heard him inside in my spirit. I heard him say he going to deliver Leo. So I prayed. You want to know what happened? Well, you got to tune in next time. We'll get on later now. Now, this is what happened. <laughs> I ain't going to do you like that. This is what happened. I prayed for Lil, and nothing changed. It didn't look like nothing changed. I mean, she kept on jerking, screaming, and all that, trying to fight. And so Troy, you know, he was peeping over the bed like that, little boy. And, and he was saying, it, it, she ain't, it, it didn't work. She's still, she still sick. It ain't work. She's still sick. I said, oh, it worked. I say, you can't go by what it looked like. I said, God is trying to teach you something because I know what's going to happen. God didn't waste my time sending me up here to pray. I said, you see if your auntie don't be back home. I think that was a Monday or a Tuesday. Okay. So I told her, the foot, it was three sisters, it's three of them, close to the same age, all three of them. And so I told them, I, I went and found the two that wasn't in, 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 you know, and I told them, I said, well, I prayed for her. She said, okay, well, I sure appreciate it. I said, oh, she'll be all right. I said, she'll be home. And they, they were looking at me like they're seeing the ghost, like, yeah, okay, man. You know. I said, no. See, a lot of people pray, and they don't look for nothing to happen. When I pray, I look for something to happen. I ain't God, but I look for something to happen. So I told them she was going to be all right. So Friday, they went to the hospital. And when they got to the hospital up there in that room where her bed was, the bed was made up and empty. And so they started screaming and crying and running around and looking for somebody to talk to them because that was the bed where her sister was. And what had happened was they thought <laughs> that she, they, they told me, they thought that she had died and they just hadn't gotten the word to the family yet. It said, so they were screaming and crying, oh, my sister dead and all that. Her sister was over standing up looking out the window. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Now, her sister was looking out the window, looking at the people park and looking at the kids play in the parking lot and all of that, and, or, and, you know, play wherever they were playing. But anyway, she was looking out the window, and she heard all that screaming, and she went around the corner, and her sister's name is Jeanette and Carolyn. So this ain't no test of phone. This is a testimony. I hope they watch it. But that's their sister's name. And she said, Jeanette, Carolyn, over here. And then when they looked around and saw her, they almost had to put them in the hospital. <laughs> the sister told me, she said, when I saw my sister, I grabbed my heart and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, oh, you know, because they wasn't expecting her to be well. Got it? They, last time they saw her, she was down. The doctor gave her a release paper, signed it, said, she's all right. She's back to normal. We don't know what happened, but take her home. She don't need to be in here. And she got out and she went home. Now, what happened? I prayed in faith in Jesus' name. Now, you might be asking, well, do everybody you pray for get healed? Nope. What happened if you pray for one and they die? Next. Because I'm not a healer. It ain't none of my business. You, you understand that? I can't heal nobody. You can't either. All right? But I'm not afraid to pray for them. Okay. So, so that happened. So if healing is over, see, see, it's too late for me. You Leave me alone. You know, day the miracle's over. You can't tell me that because I saw that with my eyes. I'm the one prayed for her and she got out. Okay, I saw God's mighty hand move and deliver her and set her free. So I'm telling you somebody outside of Shelby. Now, let me tell you about me. Okay, because this ain't no testimony. Okay, this happened to Shelby Vaughn. When I was 10 in Liberty, I dived off the high diving board on a guy's back. And when I was in midair, when I was in midair, uh, my shoulder, my, this shoulder right here, when I was coming down on them, you know, because they were racing and I didn't know it. And I was in midair and I was saying, look out, you know, because I'm finna hit his back. And I heard this voice say, turn your head. Because if I would have hit him in the square of his back with my head, I would have broke my neck and I would be paralyzed today. So I turned my head and this shoulder hit him in the square of his back. And I went down to the bottom. Okay, now, you don't have to believe none of this is okay, but I'm going to tell you. When I hit him and I sprung my back, I was going down, I was floating down to the bottom, and I never held my breath. I was breathing water like a fish. <laughs> I understand. I know. Yeah, I know. But I was breathing. 
and I was talking to myself. I'm floating down to the bottom. I said, oh, I hurt my back real bad, pretty bad. I'm talking to myself while I'm floating down to the bottom. I ain't holding my breath like, mm. I wasn't doing that. I was talking to me out loud. Bubbles coming out of my mouth. Oh, I hurt my back real bad. Boy, I'm sure glad I, told, I turned my head. I wonder who told me to turn my head. I didn't see nobody but I heard. You understand? I'm talking. Then they came down and, and the guy got me. And then they took me, brought me up to the top and laid me on the side. Got it? You understand what I just said? So that's the first miracle. I'm breathing water like a fish. That's first. Okay. So then they wanted to take me to the doctor, and I said, no, I'm all right. So I wouldn't go to the doctor and all of that. You know, I thought I just sprung it real bad, and I was 10. But I had damaged my spine, and it was twisted in two directions. So now my spine started to grow twisted, but I didn't know it. You got it? So I was twisted forward like this, and then I was twisted this way. So I felt, I, could, I knew I was twisting, and I couldn't do nothing about it. Like I was born like illiform, like they say. But, you know, I was twisted like that. And when they see me come walk in the club or the party, they say, boy, that brother got a cool walk. I was hurt. It wasn't cool nowhere. I couldn't stand up straight. I was, that stuff was killing me. Man, I couldn't, yeah, cool, right. No, I was hurt. You understand? And so I started taking a lot of pills and all of that, and I'm telling you the old I got. So for seven years, my spine was growing like that. Got it? And I was hiding it. I wasn't telling nobody until I got about 14 or 15 Then I started telling my mama. And then we started going to chiropractic, and they was trying to get me well and all of that. So we went to the hospital at the med center, and the doctor told me, he said, I ain't never seen nobody's back this bad off who wasn't born like this. And then the doctor said, by the time you're 30 years old, you're going to walk like an old woman. So whatever you're going to do, the doctor telling me, whatever you're going to do, have a family, whatever, do it before you're 30 because they're going to have to carry you. You're going to be, you're going to be a handicap, and they're going to have to carry you around. And you've seen them old people bent over. He said, you'll never be able to look a man in the eye. And he bent over and showed me how he thought I was going to be looking. And so he said, there ain't nothing I can do. It's, it's just, it's, it's, you way too bad. You know, because if I did cut all the vertebrae out, then you wouldn't ever be able to bend. So he wanted to talk about not one, but a few. He said, but no, nah, I don't. I said, oh, no, I don't want no operation on my back. So I said, well, all I got to do is make yourself comfortable and go home. I said, okay. So that's what I did. And then this thing rolled up in me after I got saved. Now, I understand I'm saved. I'm hurt. When I got saved, I was crippled. I was like that, but a whole lot of people didn't know it, okay? And so God had called me to preach five months after I got, after I got saved. Five months. I was 19 years old. And I was reading the Bible. I'm reading the Bible like I'm telling you to do. And I'm reading the Bible. I said, well, a doctor ain't got the answer. There must be some answers in this Bible. So I, I read in Isaiah 53, I think it's 5, the Bible says, by stripes, you are healed. And I, I, I was getting into what I'm telling you right now. I'm thinking, hmm, okay. And I turned to 1 Peter 2.24, and I read that. That says, by stripes, you, you, you were healed. And then in, uh, uh, I think, Hebrews 13 and 8, it says, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. I'm in, Kil I'm in Kilgore. I'm hurt. I'm reading the Bible in my room. I'm taking pills. I got a board under my bed trying to get the pressure off my back. You understand what I'm saying? I hurt. 24-7. It was just worse off than other times. And I started reading them. I did. I. I started reading these scriptures. I said, according to this Bible, I could get healed. That's what I said. According to this Bible, I didn't tell no preacher. I didn't ask nobody to pray with me, agree with me, pray for me. None of that. Because I wasn't interested in that. I didn't want nobody to tell me it couldn't work. I wanted to know for myself. This is between me and God. I didn't want to hear no other man talk. I didn't want to hear nobody talk. I didn't want, I wanted this, I said, I got to prove this. I said, because God, if you heal me, I tell the world. But if you don't, then I can't preach healing because you won't heal me. So I meant that. And so what, what happened was I started to speak these words. I said, Lord, I thank you that by your stripes I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, by your stripes I was healed. And you are no respect of person, and you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then I grabbed my books and go on to school, you know, because I'm going to school to be a doctor, you see. That's what I was, you know. And so I went on to class. And I did that every day. Every day. I thank God every day. And that was just a part of, that was just part of what I did. Now, I was still going to the doctor. I was still taking my pills, you know, get the pain off, and I was still going to a chiropractor all the time while I'm believing God to get this off. But, but, but 
I started just thanking God. I, I praised him, and I said, Lord, I thank you that I'm healed. Then I'd pop my pills. And then I'd, oh, stand up, grab my books. Oh, Lord, go down there. We had round stairs in my dormitory in the athletic dorm, and it was hard to get down there. And then I'd make myself try to be like a tough, you know, and try to walk straight and all that until I get out of sight. And then I'd sit down. I'm thinking, oh, man, pain hurt so bad till my eyes was crossing. You know, that's where it felt. But I said it, and I said it, and I said it, and I said it. So you're saying, okay, preacher, what happened? Here's what happened. I was working with Sister Wilborn at her church and all, and that's why, because that's what God told me to do, a woman preacher. And she had been on a fast, and right in the middle of her sermon, she said, there's somebody here, you got a twisted spine. I never told her. I didn't tell nobody, understand, except my mama. She said, if you'll come up, God will heal you right now. And so I'm looking around at all the people there, and wasn't nobody moving. And so I'm thinking, what is wrong with these people? I'm fussing. I'm sitting in the back fussing. They heard what that lady said. Man, what's wrong with these people? And then nobody moved, so she said it louder. She said, I'm telling you, you got a twisted back, and you're here in this service right now, and if you come up, God will heal you. And so I'm looking because I want to see somebody move or flinch or something, you know, and wasn't nobody moving. And I'm, I'm still fussing. I cannot. That's what I was doing. Cannot believe it. They heard what that woman said. And suddenly, everything got quiet. And this presence came beside me and said, she's talking to you. I said, oh. So what happened? I got up, went to the front. She anointed me with oil, laid hands on me. A couple of things happened when she prayed for me. Number one, the, uh, I felt this rope, like a rope, come off my spine, like somebody was pulling it. And I heard a snap. That's first. I felt this presence come on this side, a presence like, a, like an angel. I think it was a healing angel. He put his hand on my stomach and on my back and did that. And when my back straightened up, the pain jumped out of my back. I was 19 years old, and my back is straight today. Day the miracle's over? That what you say? I don't think so. I'm still healed. I'm sitting up straight. I ain't never, I ain't never hurt no more in my back from 19 years old. How did I do it? I got in the book. That's what I'm telling you. No preacher laid hands on me. I wasn't at a miracle service. I don't have no problem with none of that. But I'm talking about me. I needed to know myself that I could trust the integrity of God's word, and I could. And I'm trying to tell you that you ought to be able to trust the integrity of God's word. See, it ain't nothing good as when you find out for yourself. So I can tell the world. Whether they believe me or whether they don't, I can tell everybody I know, let me tell you, God heals today. Let me tell you how I got healed. Let me show you how I got healed. I can touch my toes. Ain't nothing wrong with my back. And God worked a miracle because the doctor said he couldn't do nothing about it. So maybe you're facing something today. God can do something about it. So when I'm talking, I know a little something. So maybe you ought to listen to what I'm saying, okay? And so I, I, I wanted to share that. I got some more to talk to you about. But I wanted to share that with you so you can understand that God still heals today because he healed me. I'm healed right now and I'm going to stay healed forever because sickness is an outlaw. The devil is an outlaw outside the law of God. Okay. And so I encourage you, trust God with your whole heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God Almighty and he will direct your path. This is Shelby Varner from Anahuac, Texas. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you got what it takes, and it takes what you've got to change the world. God bless you. I'm going to see you next time on the air.